Amen. Today's scripture is 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1 to 13. Let me read it with a reverence. If I speak with the tongue of a man and the angels, but do not have a love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanged symbol. If I give a prophecy, Amen. An anthem by the Emmanuel Choir and the Nisi Orchestra is next. Senior Pastor will deliver a message titled Spiritual Love Lecture 1. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, all saints from the Branches Church and the local sanctuaries, the GCN viewers, and all children of God who attend the worship line. From today, I will begin the lecture series on the spiritual love. Parents are delighted when their children listen to them very well. For example, if parents tell their children to study, they study well. When parents tell them not to fight their friends, they don't do it. When parents tell them to have a good attitude and use appropriate language, they just obey. How delighted will the parents be if they have children? But suppose the children obey their parents, but they don't have any love in their hearts for their parents. Then how would the parents feel about it? How could a child obey the parents if they had no love for them? They might obey. They might obey as a part of their characters. They might obey out of the sense of a duty. Or they may obey out of a fear of being in the trouble. This kind of obedience without love cannot please the parents. And we cannot say it is the complete obedience either. I see some parents cherish their kids too much. So they are so glad to pay for their uh, running errands. The parents give their kids money for doing it. Automatically, the kids become teenagers. They ask their parents to pay for their doing errands. Does it make sense? It's the same with the relationship between Father God and you, His children. What is the purpose of God cultivating human beings? It's to gain true children with whom He can share true love. Therefore, the ultimate goal of our Christian life is to cultivate the true love in our heart. And for us to share the true love with God, we should well understand what kind of a love is really the kind of a love that God wants. We know God is love, but do you know what, God, uh, what God's love is like? When we exactly understand it, we can also love that way. It's nothing to Father God that we love in our own ways. This chapter on love is the chapter that clearly tells us about this love. If you want to save many souls as an instrument of the Holy Spirit in the end of the time, you must imprint this kind of a love in your heart and cultivate it in order for you to become an instrument of the Holy Spirit and to save many souls you first have accomplished a clean heart without any evil meanwhile you should also have an ardent of love for the souls the chapter on the love is also standards with which you can check out sanctified your heart is and how much love you have for other souls Therefore, if you engrave this in your heart and practice it completely, we can say that you have a true love in your heart. The fruits of the Holy Spirit will also be born as much as you accomplish this spiritual love. Now is the time when loneliness uh, prevails and the love is cool, cooling down. There are so many broken hearts and there are so many people around the world who long for true love. 
I pray in the name of the Lord that you will long for this message more eagerly and receive it only with a yes and amen so that through this message you will be, become an instrument of the Holy Spirit who have a passionate love and the power of God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, before we get into the each verse of the chapter on the spiritual love, let us look into general contents of this chapter and the background of the writing this book. When taking a look at the Bible, there is a chapter about the specific figure like a blessing chapter, the marriage chapter. and the chapter about the warning of the worshiping idols or the Beatitudes or the Nine Fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now, now uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is known as a love chapter. What do you think love is? People define, uh, define the love according to their thought. They also think they lo- uh, li- uh, live with love. What is heartbreaking is that if they love, they should be happy, but instead there are many situations where they are hurt and uh, suffer pain in their hearts. This is either because they do not understand what true love is or because they try to love only within their limits. In this chapter on a spiritual love, we can see the kinds of a love that God considers true. Now we men consider real love. It also tells us in detail about why we have to love and what love is. Therefore, I hope you will understand what true love is uh, through this message. and practice what you hear immediately so that you will be able to confess that you truly love the love. Brothers and sisters, first let us talk about the background of the writing this chapter 13 of the first book of Corinthians. Then we can understand better why love is important. In the precious chapter, Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the various gifts of the Holy Spirit and the titles. In the Corinthian church, there were many of the various gifts of the Holy Holy Spirit. And there were some arguments among the believers about which gift is the greatest. Uh, There are many spiritual gifts, like a power, ability, and... preaching the word of God, then which one is the best? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 says, But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. As said, the various gifts of the Holy Spirit are given by God for the benefit of the faith of the believers. But sometimes we can see some problem rise because of these gifts. For example, there are some people who say they have received the gifts of the healing or gifts of the prophecy and the break the order of the church. Just as the people who do sorcery in the world, they lift themselves up and ask for money and seek their own benefit in exchange for the service of their gift. The gifts of the Holy Spirit can be never being selling or buying. and it's rare to get a gift of the prophecy. Some may predict what will happen in the future, being inspired by the Holy Spirit on the spot. However, however, I've never seen any God's servant who received the gift of a prophecy. The Apostle Paul, in an attempt to put down this kind of argument in the Corinthian church, said that gifts are many, but the Holy Spirit is the same. And though gifts are various, all gifts are given by the God, and each of them is precious and a level of equality. After explain, uh, explaining this, he said, one, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 31, but honestly desire the greater gifts. 
and I show you still more excellent way. And then he wrote the chapter on love. Through the, this chapter on spiritual love, he intended to say that the greatest gift of all gifts is the love. As I said a while ago, it's rare to get a gift of a prophecy. Some may predict what will happen in the future, being inspired by the Holy Spirit on the spot, or I saw some read a prayer from the deep heart of the others. However, I've never seen any person who received the gift of a prophecy. In the first church, uh, Deacon Philip's daughters received the gift of a prophecy. You should recognize that Philip accomplished the sanctification enough to have an impact on his daughters having the gift. His daughters just obeyed their father, Philip, a holy God person. Then they could get the gift of a prophecy. Only those who go to spirit, to whole spirit, and are holy are likely to receive the gift of a prophecy. All people who go to spirit don't receive the gift though. Anyway, when people who don't have to do with being holy say they have the gift of the prophecy, it's a lie. Namely, he wanted them to realize that the purpose of God giving the various gifts of the Holy Spirit to the church is ultimately to let the believers to accomplish the most excellent gift, which is love. Even though the believers are given great gifts or titles, If they don't have a love and if there are disagreements and dissensions for them, it would have been better for them not to have received that gift. When believers lead the Christians live, then the church accomplishes the kingdom and the righteousness of God. The ultimate purpose is the love. There is also false love that seems to be good in our outward appearance, but it is not the true love. For example, there are many goods that are labeled as a being luxury item, and they look the same as the though authentic luxury goods, but in fact, they are not. They are only imitations. There are so many fake luxury items. Many people buy these imitations thinking they are authentic goods. Luxury goods usually retain the original shape and the form even after a long time, and the quality is good too, but imitations are more easily broken or they wear out more quickly. Likewise, even concerning love, there is a spiritual love that is like uh, authentic luxury goods or while there is a fleshly love that is uh, like uh, imitations. When you buy a watch that is supposed to be a good, after a few years, it may start losing a few seconds or more. But high-quality Swiss-made or genuine luxury watches can stay accurate for over 10 years without any issues. That's a big difference between the luxury items and the fakes. There is one kind of a love that never changes. It is the one with which a person sacrifices everything for other person. There is also other kinds of a love that change after uh, some time and break down even other trivial matters. From now on, when I tell you about the, what is most people generally call love, I want you to distinguish the, between whether the love is expressed in the true love or if it is just an imitation. I hope you all have a spiritual love that is true. First, let us consider love between neighbors or friends. We Korean people say a word meaning a neighbor cousins. It means that our neighbors are as close as our brothers. It means we share a good relationship and a friendship with our neighbors. But this word is becoming more and more untrue. Nowadays, people keep their doors closed now, even toward their neighbors. They not only build a high wall around their houses that can be seen, but they also build a walls in their hearts. They do not care about others. They don't even know who lives next door, and they don't have any intention to find out who they are. They consider only themselves and their family members important. Also, if they feel their neighbor is causing them any kinds of damage or harm, 
they don't hesitate to ostracize or fight with them. Nowadays, there are many people among the neighbors who sue one another because of small things. So then what about love between friends? Many people have the, have the experience in which one a person thought that particular friends would always be on their side, but betrayal by that friends left them. Oh, one thing I need to empathize and move on. Let's say when one of the best friends or one of the loving siblings asks you to lend the money or to offer collateral because he's on the verge of the bankruptcy, saying he will pay back soon. His asking seems unsure to get back your money, feeling risky to borrow your money or offer collateral, so you carefully turn down his asking. Then he feels so sorry, saying to you, Are you my real friend? I would trust you, but you betrayed me? He might use the word betraying like this. He might... He might end the friendship with you, saying, I used to love you. Let's think about it. Who betrayed the first? The friends who ask you to offer collateral actually uh, betrays you first. If he is your true friend, he wouldn't ask you the favor that can be too much burden to his friends, friends you. What if he completely failed? Then not only his family, but also the family of his friends, your family, also would go bankrupt. Is he love to him? Does he mean to friendship to him? It's fake love. It's nonsense that requiring something to risk is able to in a friendship? No way. This case is never called love even among the siblings in the Lord. I mean, this case should not happen among the, our members in the church. Why? It's against the word of God and the works of our Satan will take place soon afterwards. There must be some among you who had very close friends that began to avoid you from the time you became a Christian who tried to live a life in the light. since they were not able to enjoy your company in worldly things anymore. Some people think it is wise to make a base on the what they can gain from them. It is the fact that today is very difficult to find a person who willingly give up his time, effort, and money with a genuine love for his neighbors or friends. So then what about the love between brothers? Unlike neighbors and friends, they were born of the same parents, so is their love any better? Of course, brothers and sisters who are born of the same parents and who grew up together since infancy have a deeper relationship. So they help each other. And sometimes a brother may sacrifice himself for other siblings. But usually, even though they have a very close relationship, they have a young, once they get married and they have their own families, they tend to pay more attention to their own family and they become less inter uh, interested in their brother and sisters. I was born as the last son among the three sons and the three daughters. And I was loved by the brothers and sisters very much, but when I was on my sickbed for seven long years, I became a burden to them. My, brother tried, my brothers tried to help me to some extent, but when they reached their limits, they just forsook me. If there would have been a possibility that I would have been healed, they would help me to the end, but I seemed impossible to be healed. and I saw them leave me. Of course, in this case, we can understand that it was because they had to take care of their own families too. But in the world, in some cases where they seek their own benefit to extreme brothers, becomes like uh, enemies toward each other after fighting over things like uh, inheritance money, possessions, or other things. 
When inheritance distributions occurs, a brother and his sister in the family who have cared each other turn to arguing each other to gain more property. To gain more property, to gain more money. Now, what about the love between a husband and a wife? who became one fleshy by marriage. When they date each other, they confess, I cannot live without you. I will love you forever. They make a confession of a love with so many sweet words. But what happens after they are married? My brothers in the Lord and their wives, please listen carefully. Sometimes they say, I cannot live because of you. Or they complain to each other saying, I was cheated. After saying I love you then, getting married, within a few months, some couple beings arguing and they conclude that they don't have anything to heat it up. They bring up their partner's family background, education background, personality to make an excuse. Once they mention they don't click with their partner, they think about breaking up the relationship. Indeed, they think it's a better idea to break up, saying they don't have anything common and to share. Sometimes, they even make a mockery of their partner's family. The husband, when he doesn't like the cooking of his wife, just a little bit, may complain bitterly against his wife. If the husband doesn't make enough money, the wife being to complain giving trouble to her husband, saying that her friends are be, uh, buying homes and uh, buying good cars and uh, so on. Some wives uh, provoke their husband to anger, saying, When does your promotion happen? Nowadays, there are some married couples who live in the same house but never talk to each other. Looking at the statistics about the Korean domestic violence, almost half of all of the couples suffer violence in their homes from their spouse, spouses. To put it simply, many husbands punch and hit their wives. What about you, my brothers? Maybe you don't write brothers? I can't imagine other elders here do it. They live as only one spouse to each other, but they forget about their hurt they had in the beginning, but they live a difficult lives, hating and fighting against each other. There are even quite many couples who get divorced during the honeymoon, and average duration from the time of the marriage to the divorce is getting shorter and shorter. A couple under their honeymoon, but friends of the husband join them, and they spend the night drinking and partying. They spend the first night alone. The wife was so upset about it, and she returned home feeling disappointed. She She just left alone at the first night. They married because they loved each other, but as they discovered the bad things about their spouse, spouse and because they have a different thought and the taste, what they thought was a love just cools down very quickly. This proves that the love they had was a fleshly love seeking its own benefits. Now, what about the love which people in the world consider most noble, that of the parents? Usually, it's the heart of the parents to give to their children first a letter than a taking good things for themselves. But in one corner of the heart that cares for their children with love, there is a place in a heart where people usually they seek their own benefit. If they truly love their child, you would be willing to sacrifice your own interest and even give up your life for their sake. This kind of a love where you can give everything for your child is indeed a spiritual love. While raising them, it might seem like you're putting a lot of the effort and the love, but later on, you realize how many parents are actually raising their children for their benefit or glory. 
For example, when parents force their children to something, I'm saying all this for your well-being. So at the time of the marriage, when children choose something that the partners don't really want or choosing a course in their lives that is against the desire of the parents, some moms express their disappointment of the giving birth their kids before the kids. They think or say, I have done so much for you, but you don't realize it, and now you don't listen to me. This proves that their devotion and the sacrifice were only conditional love that wants something in return. Also, nowadays, there are some parents who consider their own lives more precious than their children, and some of them just forsake their children or just get divorced without caring for children, some parents kill their own children too. As you listen to the, these things until now, do any of you think that you don't have to love anybody because all of them among the neighbor's friends or family members are useless? Of course, you shouldn't think so. God's children who truly believe in God love their neighbor's friends and the family members. In the Ten Commandments in given by God, the first four are commandments that we have to keep in our uh, relation to God, and the fifth commandment s tell us to honor our parents. Ephesians chapter 5, 33 said, Each individual among you also to love his own wife even as himself. If a wife cannot admire her husband, uh, she cannot offer special love. Similarly, opposite the same. Both partners must uh, love each other. And if the wife admires her husband as she admires herself, and the husband treats his wife with respect, they will naturally serve each other well. Also, Matthew chapter 22, 39 says, The second is like this, You shall love your neighbors as yourself. Therefore, children of God should not neglect their duty for their family members and other people only because they are leading a life in Christ. They should give more true love than other people do. They should not just satisfy the physical needs of the others, but also they have to give them the spiritual love to lead their souls to salvation. Let me tell you one story about this kind of a love. There was a one deaconess who was diligent in her Christian life. Her husband didn't attend the church, but rather he persecuted his wife for attending church. If something bad happened, he said it is because she was attending the church and gave her a hard time. Then one day, she began to attend the dawn prayer meeting. She always carried a pair of her husband's shoes with her. Holding these shoes, she prayed to God, Father God, today only these shoes came before you. Next time, next time, let the owner of the shoes come also. She prayed with tears every day. After some time, something amazing took place. The husband of the distechinist began to attend the church with her. When, when he was leaving for work every day, he felt it was strange that his shoes were always warm in the early morning during the cold of a winter. One day, he saw his wife going to pray with his shoes. 
pressed against her as she carried them. He was touched by the love and sincerity of his wife, and he stopped persecuting his wife. He then became a good believer, attending church with his wife. Brothers and sisters, who in this world can pray with the love and the tears for those who persecute and curse at him or her? Also, in this world where people live only for themselves, who can spread the love to neglected neighbors with a true hurt, sacrificing themselves even in the face of the disdain? It's God's children who receive and learn the true love from our Lord. I think many of you have experienced pain in the heart because of a flesh love. before you came to know the Lord, but when you were feeling the pain and the loneliness because of that the meaningless love, there was one who comforted you and became your friend. Who is it? It's our Lord. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 3 says, He was despised and forsaken of a man. a man of sorrows and acquainted with the grief. And like a one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and he did not esteem him, esteem him. Jesus had no faults, but he was despised and forsaken by men. Also, Jesus suffered from many hardships and the property. He knows the pain of the disease very well, too, being acquainted with the grief. Therefore, he understands and knows the heart of a man very well. Jesus first took the heavenly glory and came to this earth. He went the way of the suffering just like a man and became our true comforter and friend. He gave us a true love that the world cannot give until He was crucified for us. Dear brothers, if you have received a kind of a, a kindness and a grace from your wives today, please show them this kind of a love. Give them the love you haven't given before, abundantly and sincerely. However, wives, please don't react like this way. Oh, You would change it? Okay, thank you. Then, are you willing to be in the charge of a kitchen? Making rice every day? Smart wives would refund like, Oh, Mr. Harvey, you are our breadwinner, supporting our family. Leave the chicken to me and let me you do your best on your own work like business things, doing volunteering work for the church and praying. How beautiful they would be. But sometimes the husband cooking for his family sounds so great. Then his family will be on cloud nine on their dad's cooking day. The husband might be served by his wife with a greater dinner next time. Before I accepted the Lord, I had been suffering from so many diseases and I could thoroughly feel the pain and the loneliness of the dizziness and the poverty. As I was always on my sick bed, what I had was only a sick body and the death that was increasing like a rolling snowball. I experienced the disdain and the mockery of the world around me. I was lonely with a deep sense of the despair. But as I met the Lord, the only one who gave me the true love, I was healed of all my visits. I gained a new life. Indeed, our Lord's love for us is not solely for His own benefit, and He did not heal me just for His own sake. 
His love for us is selfless and genuine, driven by His care for us as individuals. He loves for us, for who we are and desire our well-being. Moreover, His love is also directly toward bringing glory to Father God. Even if God asks for more, it's not because He wants to satisfy His own hunger and eat heartily. When the Bible says, give and it will be given to you, and when God asks you for more, it's because He wants to bless me abundantly. When God asks for more and I fulfill His will, He, being all-knowing and all-powerful, will bless me even more magnificently. So, when God asks for more, it's for my benefits. After I was healed of all my diseases completely, I had to begin from the very bottom with so much death in my hands. I had to work from the early morning till late evening on a construction site. Five of us had to live in a one-room house for quite some time in a solemn area. I feel all those times were so precious. I'm grateful I'm, I'm, for, I'm for growing up in the countryside when I was young. I remember picking wild ve- uh, vegetables like uh, mugworts with my mother to help, help her out. We would carefully pick uh, mugwort leaves, making sure to leave the roots intact. so that they would grow back. We would use the fresh mugwort in the soup or make a nutritious rice porridge with it. The leaf of a rose of a Sharon, the national flower of South Korea, are truly thick. There are so many mites attached to them. At the time, there was no medicine for them. So we just had to deal with the uh, tick on the rows of Sharon leaves. We washed them thoroughly and used them to make a soup or nutritious rice porridge. Our generation experienced the difficulties when we were young, so we just thank for having a simple meal with the rice and the soy sauce. In fact, I don't know what to say the gratitude. I don't mean that I'm still struggling for nothing to eat. I used to cook soup with a wild wheat. Now rice mixing with a soy sauce and the red pepper paste is so yummy. Adding just a little bit sugar. If adding some drops of uh, sesame oil, it's super yum. Having a meal like that way is so grateful to me. I've never complained about it. I just thank Father God for having a meal this way now. So, I cannot help but offer gratitude to Father God for everything. I thank Father God for these things, thank Him for that, thank for everything. Because I had those times, I could feel the love of the Lord more deeply. And I could become a pastor and a servant of a God who can comfort and embrace the heart of the many souls. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God is love itself. And He sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to this earth for us sinners. He has prepared many dwelling places in the heavenly kingdom with all kinds of beautiful things, and He is waiting for us like a day is a thousand years. If you just open your heart a little bit, you can feel this delicate and abundant love of God. Why, uh, why, why, why don't you just think about the beauty nature? the clear sky and the sea and all the mountains and the trees and the plants that were made by the God Himself. They were made so that until we get to the kingdom of heaven, we can have a hope for heaven while we are being cultivated on the earth. Since we are chosen by Him as God's children then, which love do you have to make? A spiritual love or a flesh love? We should not have a flourishing and a meaningless love that changing according to our benefit, but true than eternal love. 
Therefore, as you listen to this message of spiritual love, I hope you will first realize that true love is also accomplished in your heart. I hope you will share your true love with God the Father not only in the kingdom of heaven, but also while you are here on the earth day by day until you get to the heavenly kingdom. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will become an instrument of the Holy Spirit and lead many souls to salvation by living a life of love toward your neighbors. I pray in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray in reminding of today's lecture. As we receive the senior pastor's prayer for the sick on the video, place your hands on the ill or weak part of the body. And if you are not sick, place your hands on your chest to receive the answer by faith. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who will receive this prayer now. Show your works and transcend the time and the space on those who are receiving this prayer through the GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and the local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to the belief from the hurts. Drive away the negative thought and the doubts, all tests and the trials. From head to toe, all organs, joints, and nerves, the tissues and cells, or whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and the Satan, all diseases, germs, and the viruses, and the infirmities go away, light come. Please scorch all of the incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All infectious, uh, infectious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, river, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, or leukemia, cerebral stroke, or high, low blood pressure, di diabetes, and thyroid problem, and the heart, the lungs, and the women disease, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of a polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated disc, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains that disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depressions, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened. Get up, the walk, and the leap. Let the eyes see, let the ears hear, let the blind come see, and the deaf hear, and the mute speaks. Heal them of after effect of all kinds of accidents and fix their broke bones. Restore them from the burns. Let the heat and the burning sensation go away. Father, please have all skin be intact. Be cleansed from the all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and uh, substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, tissues, and cells are regenerated. Bring the dead back to the life. Give them the blessing of a conception. In the name of the Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and the Satan and the ruler of the power of the air, the evil forces of the heavenly places and their servants, go away. Go away, evil, unclean, the force and the deceitful spirits, something alienating the, and all forces of the darkness, loosen the bond of the weakness, darkness, go away, light, come. Father God, give them a strength to cry out in the prayer and the power of the cast of a sin and become a sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all the things go well with them, and let their families be evangelized. Protect them all from all the kind of accident and disasters throughout this week, and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problem. With the fiery wall of the Holy Spirit, the heavenly hosts and angels, and with their blazing eyes, protect all their children, their families, workplace, and the business field. Please let the students have a wisdom and the smartest, and have them be willing to study with the father. Please do not let them lose their heart to the world of their things, and let them love God more fervently. Whether they are children, eat or drink, and whether they go, let them live a life glorifying you, Father God. 
Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I met the experienced God and the received the, His answer and the blessing. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. 